Jesus left Copernicum, which had become his Galilean headquarters, and returned to his hometown of Nazareth in this lesson. This is where he had grown up. It was 20 miles southeast of Copernicum. The disciples of Jesus came along. See, part of his training of them was through the teachings and the miracles that he would perform in their view. Now, Jesus regularly attended synagogue. He was often invited to speak as a guest speaker. On the Sabbath, he gave a lecture in the meeting place. Needless to say, Jesus impressed the people of Nazareth. They didn't disagree with his teaching, but they questioned his schooling and authority. Now, this is similar to the Pharisees who questioned his authority. Now, let's admit, we all have questioned when we see a familiar person in a position doing jobs that we never could envision them doing. You may not admit it, but I'll admit I've gone to see high school acquaintances preach because I was happy they were in a pulpit rather than a prison. The people said, we had no idea he was this good. How did he get so wise all of a sudden? How did he get all of this ability? But they went a little further in the next verse. They questioned and diminished his authority in the same breath. Apparently, Jesus had been known as the town carpenter after Joseph's death. So they murmured, is not this the carpenter? The words carpenter mean that he was a craftsman, a person who worked with wood, metal, or stone. At that time, he was somebody who made plows or yokes. These statements weren't meant as inquiries. They were meant as castigation, as cutting statements. He's just a carpenter, Mary's boy. We known him since he was a kid. We know his brother, James, Justice, Jude, and Simon. And we know his sisters too. Who does he think he is? That's what they were saying. They were closed to the message because they were closed to the messenger. We see systemic classism at work here. Classism is prejudice against people because of their social class. Jesus was too poor, too lacking in priestly education. He was in essence getting above his societal place, speaking with this kind of authority to these people. We possibly see jealousy here. How can one rise out of these meager surroundings to become a great teacher with this kind of wisdom and knowledge? We sort of see that crab in the barrel syndrome trying to pull him back down to his societal place. It's impossible for him to rise. We also see doubt in God. Think about it. If we believe God is omnipotent, then he has the power to use clean vessels and dirty vessels to do his divine will. In this case, it was easy because we had a clean vessel doing that which was his ultimate and sole purpose in life to tell us about the grace of God. Sometimes at our work, at our church, at our home, we sometimes can't get past our doubt, our jealousy, our stereotypes to accept the messenger, the leader, the authority, the knowledge, the wisdom, or the message. Jesus told them a prophet was without honor in his own home. Among his relatives or on the streets, he played as a child. This was a popular proverb at this time. Now, let's look in the mirror. It's sometimes hard for us to accept people you have known for a long time. Someone who you thought of as lower than you or equal to you, but now has greater knowledge, wisdom, or authority than you. I recall as a young lawyer, I gave up trying to explain the law to my older relatives that knew me as a child, even though they would come and ask attorney Ronnie. Let me pause here and say I don't answer that name except to older relatives. But even though they would ask me and I would say the exact words that other lawyers would say, they would not accept 
that advice. They'd rather go to a strange lawyer who would tell them the same thing, a lawyer who I had victoriously litigated against, and lawyers who would refer their clients to me about these very same issues. So I understand what Jesus is saying. It's sometimes hard for people to accept the miraculous power of God when it's coming from a child that you knew when they were growing up. Just as my uncles couldn't accept how the little kid who threw china berries at his cousins had turned into a lawyer, the people here could not accept how a mere carpenter had turned into a great prophet, a great teacher, and the savior of the world. Obviously, Jesus thought about this firm disbelief and lack of acceptance at home. Jesus wasn't able to do much of anything there in Nazareth. He laid his hands on a few people, healed them, but Jesus was amazed by the people's blindness and hardness. In the presence of great truth, even signs and miracles, they refused to believe. But what we see here is that just because you are rejected doesn't mean that you should be dejected. The rejection of Jesus in Nazareth was their loss not the world's loss. Their native son left and made a circuit to other villages, teaching and changing the world, becoming the cornerstone of our faith and in actuality, the cornerstone of our civilization. That's the lesson for this week. Have a great week. Bye. From the kingdom's throne.